This is Brent with Likens Motorsports, and uh, we're looking at the next uh, build that I have going on. This is a 363 cubic inch small block Ford for um, a customer's Bronco in Illinois. This is using um, the Ford Racing Boss 302 block. It's an 8200 deck uh, for 125 bore. Uh, it's a roller block, uses the raised uh, lifter bores so that you can run a standard um, a standard journal, uh, standard base circle camshaft and, and the, the lifter tray and the dog bones if you, if you so desire. These are pretty beefy blocks. Um, main caps are these um, I don't know, can't remember if they're, if they're steel caps or cast iron, um, but, uh, splayed, four bolt, pretty strong. I have, um, I have used these blocks before in 800 horsepower, uh, drag race motors with, without changing any of the, of the hardware that I just showed you. Uh, just really, really strong pieces. Priority oiling, and you can get to... Um, all the clean outs and everything that you need to. Um, they have O-ring plugs for the gallery plugs. Um, screw in freeze plugs. One piece rear main seal. Uh, the crossover that you're normally used to looking at back here for the lifters is gone. So um, this one's been fully machined and um, cam bearings have been knocked in and I've done some detailed work on the oil pump mounting flange and uh, deburred the bottles of the cylinders and got everything clean and uh, we're getting ready to put some paint on it but uh, my goal this week is to hopefully have uh, the short block done towards the end of the week um, it is a scat steel 3 400 stroke and a set of scat i-beam rods with some Male pistons so, uh, be a nice, uh, nice foundation for AFR heads that are coming and, and some other goodies. So right now, uh, I'm going to get everything wiped down again and masked off and we're going to put some paint on it. All right. So we got our block prepped and painted freeze plugs in it. Uh, cam is in it. I had to, uh, do a little reaming on the, um, dowel pin hole to get the dowel pin to fit it was way undersized but that's fixed um the main caps are nodular iron so uh, after i made that last comment i started looking it's obvious on the front and rear cap that they are cast iron um, and you can start to see it on that part of the cap right there so these are iron caps um but they're a four bolt main and extremely stout like i said i've had these in in bracket race engines uh at almost 800 horsepower with just this factory uh, main cap and bolt package so um, what we're going to do now is um uh, wash our main caps and i'm going to lay in our main bearings and i'm going to use um, we'll have to measure and see which ones we're going to end up with but these are coated um Clevite main bearings, and um, we're going to get our uh, main bearing clearances checked. I've already checked our rod bearing clearances. Um, pistons have been measured. Um, we are using this um, Male Power Pack Series piston uh, with a SCAT I beam rod, and uh, I've got all these measured up and checked our bore clearances and everything is in spec there so next step is to check our main bearing clearances all right so a couple things to note here um these main bolts torque at 135 and they recommend just 30 weight oil on the threads so that's how the block was machined and that's how we will do it um i'm going to use my uh, Mitotoyo bore mic. It's got a big face on it, so uh, that'll work for um, the front bearing, but on the smaller ones, since this is just a two and a quarter 
inch main um, main bearing uh, ID um, what I have to do is switch to a smaller bore mic when I get to uh, the rear ones or else my the, the face on my dial indicator hits uh, the main bearing register so uh, but on this front cap I can use uh, this one and um, I buy well I usually buy several different sets of, of main bearings um, just because I never know uh, how the tolerances are going to stack up and where I'll need to set the bearing clearances um, but for this one, um, we are looking at about a thou and three tenths, which is too tight. I'd like to see somewhere around, uh, with coated bearings, around two thousandths or a two two, something like that. So, um, you know, instead of me um, sticking all five caps on here and getting them torqued up, um, I would recommend just starting with one cap and getting a... Um, you know, an idea of where you're going to be at. You know, if it's at 1,000th, then you know that, um, you know, you're not going to need um, a set of one under bearings or, or standard bearings or something like that. If it's at 3,000th, then I know that I won't need a set of X bearings. But um, what I'm going to end up doing on this one is mixing and matching. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to try it with uh, a standard bearing shell in the bottom and um, an X bearing in the top, and hopefully that'll get us uh, right around two thousandths. Okay, so we got our um, bearing shells checked, or swapped really, and we're about at two thousandths. So we're gonna use um, what they would call a half and half. I'm gonna use a, a half standard in on one side and a half uh, extra clearance on the other side, and that'll get us our bearing clearance. So hopefully the rest of the mains will follow suit, and I'm gonna check those now. All right, so we got all of our main bearing clearances checked. Um, a couple of the journals on the mains on the crank were a little bit fatter than the other ones, so I did have to step up to the X bearing on on both sides, but we did end it up with um between two thousandths and two and a half thousandths on all the on all the mains um i did give the thrust bearing just a little bit more oil, oil clearance um i like having a little bit more clearance for the flanges so now we're going to get our uh crankshaft in all right so we got our uh, assembly lube on the bearings and we got um, our crankshaft laid in and i checked uh, the thrust play with just the upper bearing in there and we're good there this is a scat uh forged crankshaft three four hundred stroke and um no two-piece main seals on these this is a one-piece main seal and um i just put just a very very light coat of silicone around the outside and obviously lube up the inside it is much much easier to put them on with the main cap off then try to drive them in later. So um, you can just slide in. You usually have to pick up on them and then they'll just slide in like that. Um, that's a whole lot easier than, than driving them in. Um, so I'm gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna take this off and fix it right, put it on, and then get our main caps on and torqued. All right, so we're putting our timing set on before um, I degree the cam. And this is a billet steel cloys double roller timing set. Also a steel thrust plate. I like to keep all the uh, materials the same here to uh, decrease the chance of uh, any kind of wear due to, you know, material mismatches. Uh, this is a nine-way adjustable uh, crank sprocket. So we can dial in our cam timing if we if we need to, and um, we're going to get this on now. I got some assembly lube on. Also, uh, check torque on our little thrust plate bolts and also our gallery plugs. Okay, so when we get our timing set on, a couple things we need to check. Um, I always advise to measure the the length of your bolt under the washer, and then compare it to 
how much thread you have in the cam. I've seen that vary. Um, we're looking for a good uh, chain tension. Uh, we're looking to make sure that our dowel pin does not uh, stick out past this mating surface and that our washer uh, will cover it. And we're making sure to, that these two gears are in the same plane, that one's not sticking out past the other one. Okay, once you get everything torqued and checked, cam thrust clearance checked, five thousandths, and that's what the crank thrust was too. So we're in good shape. We're gonna get uh, our rings filed now and get a piston in and we'll get a um, get the cam agreed. Should have the short block done um, today. I am waiting on um, this block uses, I thought it was gonna come with a, a, a stud for the main cap that the long pickup bolts to, but it does not. So I have that on order and um, can't get the oil pan on the day, but should be able to do that shortly. All right, so we did get our camshaft agreed. I had to get a little bit creative on uh, setting up my fixture because my normal fixture um, has this amount of threads at the end of it to screw into the head bolt holes. But as you, as you can see on this block, the threads start further deeper down. So I had to use um, a couple of dial indicators and magnetic bases to get us to greed. But um, at the uh, zero position on the timing set, everything came in exactly as it should. Um, we're in good shape there, so I want to get the rest of the rings uh, gapped and um, get the rest of the pistons put in. Alright, so we got all of our pistons and rods in. Everything went real slick on that. Uh, these are Molly pistons, and this is the Power Pack series. Comes with a 1mm, uh, 1mm, 2mm ring pack. And um, from experience, it takes about seven to eight pound-feet of torque to roll this uh, rotating assembly over. So just really nice uh, modern combination. And what I wanna do now is roll the engine upside down and torque all the rod bolts and check all the rod side clearances. And once that's done, then we can put the timing cover, oil pump, and probably that's about it for today on. But uh, We'll, we'll keep rolling. So here's one thing I want to show you real quick. Uh, traditionally, when we do three, 400 strokes in you know factory blocks and even in some other blocks, um, the rod bolt comes very close to touching the cylinder at the bottom. Uh, because this is a big bore block and because it was designed for a longer stroke, Ford Racing says that you can run these up to a three and a half inch stroke without clearancing. So if you look, I mean, there is just, you could park a Yugo in between the rod bolts and in the cylinder, the bottoms of the cylinders. It's just amazing. All right, just wanted to show you that and um, I'm gonna get to torquing. All right, so I went through and torqued all the rod bolts, checked all the rod side clearances. They're all at 15 thousandths, and then I went back over all the main bolts and uh, in preparation for bolting the oil pump on. All right, for our oil pump, uh, we're going to go with a Melling Select. Uh, this is a M68 HV, and uh, the Melling Select pumps are a little bit higher end pumps. They have the support for the uh, shaft in, in the cover and a screw in relief plug. Pretty nice stuff. Um, also using uh, a Mylodon heavy duty pump shaft. Um, normally I get these from ARP, but getting anything from ARP in the last six or eight months has been nothing but torture. And if it weren't for Ford Racing having um, their own rebranded ARP head bolts. We probably wouldn't be able to get head bolts for this motor, um, but I did get those too. So we're gonna put um, put everything in right now and uh, check in that everything spins freely. Um, this little, I um, can't remember what these washers are called. Maybe Tenement washers? I can't remember. Uh, that goes towards the distributor 
and um, I try to mock up the pump and the shaft and stick it down in the hole and just make sure that I'm not fouled by that washer and then I have a little bit of clearance. But other than that, pump goes on with gasket. All right, so our pump's bolted on and I rolled the motor over. Uh, you wanna do that just to make sure that you don't have any counterweight issues or on some engines, uh, uh, I'll check rod bolt clearance uh, to the pickup tube later, but um, everything looks good here. And we're gonna get the timing cover on and then we're gonna wrap it up. All right, I did wanna show you this. This is the um, short block. So this is a um, torque wrench that measures rotating torque. Our breakaway torque is about 80 inch pounds and our rotating torque Well, I would call that probably our rotating torque is between 70 and 80. It's kind of hard to hold the camera and um, and do all this at the same time. So um, that's not very much at all and just shows good modern parts. All right, I'm back to putting the timing cover on. Um, Mr. OCD, first though, I'm gonna double check all my fasteners and make sure they're good. All right, so we got our timing cover on, and um, I could put the balancer on, but I don't like putting the balancer on until the oil pan goes on, and I'll show you that in a later video. And I can't put the pan on until the pickup goes on, and I can't put the pickup on until I get that stud that sticks in the main cap to hold the pickup up. So we are uh, we're going to call it a day. Um, I was at the dyno for about 12 hours yesterday, so I've got some other stuff to catch up on. But uh, there she be, there's a, an assembled short block. All right guys, thank you for watching. Please hit that like button. Uh, it greatly benefits me. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, thanks for watching uh, this little small block four go together. And I will say that I'm an FE guy, but man, these little small block fours go together so much easier. Nothing fights you. You don't have to sit and grind on anything or sand on anything or special parts or anything like that. And uh, it's kind of a little quick little breath of uh, fresh air to work on this. But uh, we'll continue uh, this coming week. And I've got another video coming up here in a few minutes. Uh, I did get that 427 high riser dynoed and uh, a 428 police interceptor engine for a Cobra build dynode and uh i'll go over the results of that all right guys you have a good weekend and i'll see you next week